So this is a lecture on excitotoxicity and its contribution to neurodegeneration. So let's say we have, <clears throat> pardon me, a pyramidal cell in either the hippocampus or prefrontal cortex as our example of two brain regions that show degeneration. And we have our dendritic tree coming off. So let's use the cell body as where excitotoxicity is really conglomerating. So we have axonal inputs, right, that typically cross over. They're en passant, and they drop off glutamate. So I'm gonna make glutamate in red at all these synapses. So it's an excito, excitatory input, and that's very important for normal signaling. So that can often lead to LTP, that can lead to increase incidence of action potentials, things like that. So we need, L we need glutamate release in these pyramidal cell neurons for normal functioning. So when glutamate is dropped off, it binds to both AMPA, this markers really need some help, and NMDA receptors. Typically these are co-localized, so I'm gonna draw them really close together on these NMDA on these postsynaptic spines, so NMDA and AMPA. So AMPA's main function is to allow sodium to come in, leading to depolarization, so excitatory postsynaptic potentials, and that can cause an increase in the incidence of action potentials. But it also sets up a depolarization for the, AMPA, the NMDA receptor, so when there's a depolarization on the NMDA receptor, remember from your basic 2200, more positive ions inside, remove that magnesium block. And when you have glutamate bound, that channel will open up. So let's move it to the open state. Magnesium is out floating free out here in the extracellular space. NMDA, ah, glutamate is still bound. And now through that NMDA channel, you get calcium. You also get some sodium, but mainly we're worried about calcium. So calcium levels coming through that NMDA receptor now can all filter into the cell body. So you have increased concentration of calcium due to activation of the NMDA receptor. So that's good and well, that can signal LTP, but when you're vulnerable or when you have less ability to buffer, so a decreased ability to buffer calcium, what can happen is this. So you have elevated levels of calcium into the neuron and you have, within that neuron, you have ways to buffer calcium. So we have our, uh, let's see, we have mitochondria. So usually when I draw mitochondria, it's gonna look like that. And we have our endoplasmic reticulum. So the ER is in, what color is that? Blue. And the mitochondria is in black. Mitochondria. So the endoplasmic reticulum <coughs> can actually buffer calcium. So it can store calcium in here. So I'll just put the double the cation signal. So it can buffer calcium. But when you have a decreased ability to buffer calcium or high levels of calcium concentration intracellularly inside the cell, what can happen is that endoplasmic reticulum starts to get overactive. So it's trying to store all that buffer, all that calcium, and it can't. So as it's working hard, it needs energy. So these, so a lot of these neurodegenerative pathways are in fact interlinked. <clears throat> so the excitotoxicity that we're talking about right now, let me just make sure I write that down. We're <clears throat> focusing on excitotoxicity within the neuron due to overactivation of calcium levels or high intracellular calcium levels. So as the endoplasmic reticulum is buffering calcium, 
it needs energy to store that. It needs, we're not going to get, I can't get into the cell biochemistry of the endoplasmic reticulum, but it does have this double layer and it, it, is, it has the ability to store or buffer calcium, but it needs energy from mitochondria. So the, mito, so the mitochondria start generating ATP to help store that calcium, to help buffer that calcium. So you have high levels of intracellular calcium, you have mitochondria generating ATP to help store, to help buffer that calcium within the endoplasmic reticulum, and as those mitochondria are working harder and harder and harder, generating all this ATP, that ATP is now starting to release its own reactive oxygen species. So there's another kind of common endpoint in neurodegeneration are the reactive oxygen species. So the reactive oxygen species are superoxide, uh, superoxides, hydrogen peroxide, things like that. We'll talk a little bit more about those after this. So anyway, so the excitotoxicity is, is what's really happening here. We can actually stop it at this point because it's all these high levels of calcium that are causing the endoplasmic reticulum to try to store, to buffer that calcium, and to buffer that calcium, to help buffer it, you need ATP. So the mitochondria now start generating ATP to store that, but it just can't happen. They start kicking off all these superoxides, reactive oxygen species. As those reactive oxygen species build up and up and up, the cell starts to break down. So this excitotoxicity produced by overactive calcium, or high levels of intracellular calcium, can lead to reactive oxygen species generation. It can lead to apoptotic signals, which we'll talk about, and it can lead to lysis, which we will talk about. So those, so this, in my mind, this calcium activation is, or this calcium, these high levels of calcium in these neurons, and we've talked about that when we covered the uh, the hippocampal networks. These high levels of intracellular calcium set off all these other pathways. Reactive oxygen species, because there's lots of ATP being generated, apoptotic signals, so that's often kicked off th through the mitochondria, which we'll talk about next, and then lysis, which we'll also talk about next, because as, as you generate these reactive oxygen species, in fact, that can break down cell membranes. So cell membrane breakdown. Can you still see that? No. So cell membrane breakdown, Let's see if I can zoom out a little bit, there we go. Cell membrane breakdown produced by, or that is the definition of lysis, produced by reactive oxygen species. And so when you have lysis of the cell, you also now start to set off a inflammatory response. So that's another pathway common to neurodegeneration. So it's, we start here because I think it's a central point in knowing how calcium levels, uh, high levels of calcium, because as the neuron becomes vulnerable, you have less ability to buffer that calcium. So maybe your endoplasmic reticulum is broken down, but you also seem to increase levels of intracellular calcium, which then set off this cascade of other responses. So we're going to talk about those next because they're quite related to this whole um, excitotoxicity process. So I'll let you look at this, process it, think about it. I know it's a mess, but that's why hopefully as I drew it out, it'll be clear. Bye.